So hey there, Internet. Um, happy Boxing Day. It is the day after Christmas. Um, here in the Gozer, uh, here in Gozer's household, we celebrated Boxing Day. By him, actually doing some focus mitt work <laughs> this morning. Um, you know, so my my daughter's uh, expressed an interest in learning a little bit of boxing and stuff. Um, so we got some gloves and a couple focus mitts. Um, some bag, and we did a little bit of uh, messing around. Now you can see by my uh, my butterbean-like figure, I'm not exactly the fittest boxer in the world, but I messed around with it a little bit. Um, but anyways, so so you're here and you're there. We're on to a new project. Uh, finally, um, got a Dremel tool for Christmas. I'm really excited about that. It's a Dremel 4300 with all the attachments, a flex bit, all this kind of stuff. Um, mainly looking at using that to do power wood carving. Spoons, uh, maybe some Harry Potter wizard wands, eh. uh, some definitely Lord of the Rings style wizard staffs, um, engraving on knife handles and, and uh, tomahawk handles once I get into the knife and tomahawk building. Um, and with some of the Christmas money, I ordered some, uh, some blades off of USA Knife Maker. They're fantasy blades, they're the big curved ones that kind of look like Legolas's fighting knives um, and while I don't like most of the elven aesthetic out of the movies I do like the blades um, I kind of I, I like the curvy sweepy eastern style blades so anyway so I got some of those I'll mess around with those making some handles and and things like that but anyway today that is not what we are doing um next month or no February so two months from now um, my local HEMA group, uh, Lonin, out of Seattle, is hosting Buckler Fest. Be a boss. Yeah, get the pun? I think you do, if you're following my channel. Um, but anyways, so it's a weekend of, uh, HEMA class instruction dedicated to various sword and buckler art forms. Um, you're going to have, uh, Paul Wagner from Australia, who is uh, him and, um, uh, from the Staccato School, School of Defense, they are like the the Ne Plus Ultra for anything dealing with uh, basket hilted swords. Um, so this is kind of like the George Silver style of um, sword sword and buckler from the uh, late fifteenth or well maybe fifteenth I don't know, but so from the sixteenth through the seventeenth seventeenth century. Um, Alex and his name escapes me and I should know it because I messed around with the, uh, doing 133. He's from actually from London. There's another guy coming up from uh, maybe Tacoma? I'm not sure. Who does Bolognese uh, sword and buckler. But uh, my real excitement, besides Paul Wagner, I'll uh, taking some classes, Paul Wagner training. Uh, Mike Cherba from Northwest Armadzari out, uh, out of the Portland area. Is coming up to do Georgian sword and buckler, and this is not the Georgia of Georgia, United States, but Georgia <coughs> of the Caucasus. Um, it's a really, really cool system. Um, it's called Kevzer, and it survived as a folk tradition. Um, these guys were doing this up until the 20s and 30s uh, as kind of a combination dance, showing off for the ladies and settling duels. I mean, these guys were still dueling with sword and buckler. Um, in there, if you Google the Lost Crusaders, uh, these guys will come up on here on the mistaken belief that uh, the Kevzers are actually um, these hill people are the descendants of some knights from the Lost Cru uh, from one of the Crusader kingdoms that failed. Probably not, um, but. Still cool nonetheless. But anyway, so they have this really cool sword and buckler tradition. They use kind of a straight edge, single edge, a straight single edge saber called a palash. Um, they also use curved sabers, um, shaskas, a bunch of, pretty much any, any weapon that comes to mind. And then a flat steel buckler, which is kind of unique. Most bucklers you see are domed, whether they're like a full on dome or, you know, your standard handhold one or something like this, which is starting to make inroads on a Persian doll. And this one's not deep enough to really be a doll, but it's kind of the same idea. Um, but these are gonna be flat. Um, so 
I gotta make one. I have some wooden ones, but since I have gotten a um, steel saber, steel saber simulator, say that fast, um, and pretty much everybody in the classes that I've been going to has been using steel as opposed to nylon or wood. Um, my wooden 12 inch buckler is going to be getting chewed up. So I'm going to make a stainless steel one. Oh, excuse me. Whew. Based off of some of the patterns. And I'll put some pictures in, in between here of what a real Kev, uh, a real Kevzer buckler looks like. Mine will not look like <laughs> that. Mine, mine's much more simple utilitarian. But what I started with, so what we're starting with, um, you can see, it's just a 12 inch square of 18 gauge stainless steel, which is a little floppy, um, but we're gonna roll the edge. You can see over here, I had a thinner piece of regular steel. <laughs> That's a very ugly, ugly shield. Um, maybe gonna be a center piece on this, possibly. Um, but anyways, where I rolled the edge, and now it's got a lot more, not too much more, but a lot more strength. So we're gonna roll the edge. Um, and because I'm such a classy guy, <laughs> there's my pattern, right? So I'm gonna grab a Sharpie, circle this around, um, and then we'll start cutting. All right. So I'm just uh, trying to get in focus and I don't have enough room in my workbench to do that. But, but anyway, I'm just uh, scrapping this out around the plate and I'm not sure, this is 18 gauge stainless. I might be able to cut it with my jigsaw which would simplify things a little faster. So we're gonna give that a shot first. And if that doesn't work, then we will grab the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel. So it's gonna be loud and noisy, and I know some people wanna see stuff like that, but um, <laughs> I don't, so I'm not gonna show that. I'm gonna try to cut it out, and then I'll come back once I've got the disc cut out. One quick note, always use your safety protection. See guys? Goggles, hearing protection, um, shouldn't be too dusty, so I'm not going to bother with the wood breathing. If I was grinding as opposed to cutting, uh, I'd probably also grab my respirator, um, but especially because we're dealing with stainless steel here, so I think you, you have some chromium, valent chromium, hexavalent chromium issues and some other things that you have to worry about when you're working with stainless, particularly when you're heating it. Um, you know, It's pretty well ventilated in the shed right now, um, but it is winter so I have the door closed. Summertime I would open up the door. Anyways. Alright, so looks like I'm gonna have to do a little bit of angle grinding. So this is gonna be loud but maybe uh maybe the sparks will be cool, right? <laughs> Helps to plug it in, genius. <laughs> Once again, this is not a how-to. So it's just going to be a bunch more of that, so <laughs> I'm going to turn off the camera now. But you get an idea of what I'm doing. So i got to cut out. Um, and as was the case on many of my projects, I'm just like, hmm, you know, it's a little smaller than I had hoped. Yeah, let's look at the peel thing on here. This was like some sort of uh, 12 by 12 decorative stainless steel panel. So I have a slightly bigger piece of 16 gauge that I cut out. The 16 gauge just felt a little too heavy. Um, however, you know, however, I'm going to roll the edge and flute it and uh, 
go with that because I just like that size better. And hey, you know, um, a heavier shield just makes you get stronger, right? Okay. Okay, so we're back in the workshop. Um, it's been about mm, two weeks since I started working on the first part of the buckler. Um, and I've gotten quite a bit further, um, I got a bit further along um, from when I stopped filming the last bit of the video. So I'll, so I'll show you what I've done so far um, and then kind of talk about hopefully the next steps today to complete it. Um, you can hear it. My heater's going today. It's pretty cold out, but at least it's not raining. Even for someone who lives around Seattle, the, uh, the last eh, month and a half has been kind of like, with some notable exceptions, pretty trippy. Um, and it's nice that it might be cold, but at least it's not raining, which is a good thing. Anyway, so let me, uh, let me show you what I got so far and, uh, and we'll move on. I didn't. Okay, so, that's what I got so far. Um, you notice it looks a little bit different um, right towards the end of the video. Or not the end of the video, the end of the last se segment that I filmed. Um, I talked about how, I just didn't like how that uh, piece of stainless steel had turned out. I'm going to take this and roll the edge. Well, my, uh, my skill and my equipment isn't up to rolling um, 16 gauge even mild steel so it just didn't work out you can see where I tried here's some hammer marks and things like that it was just an exercise in frustration so um, I think that 16 gauge is probably stout enough to at least stand up to you know once a month on there and if the edge gets chewed up well uh, I'll make another one and I'll figure out how to roll the edge at that point you're probably wondering what this stuff is or what why these hearts are on here um, historically, and you've seen some of the examples that I put in of the Kevzer shields. Um, Kevzer shields will have rings around the edges, um, crosses on the front, um, swirls and loops of more steel on top of the original base steel and riveted on. Serves two purposes. Um, it reinforces the thinner steel that they're using. Right, um, it's decorative, and then these edges along here because they won't be—they're not flush, right? These, when someone when someone thrusts at you with with a polish, they'll stick, right? They won't slide up, soup, and slide up in the face, and that's why normally you'd see a ring all the way around here, you know. So I do have to make sure that these are nice and friendly and won't hurt anybody, but that's what I did so far. So what I need to do is see that the edges of the lobes of the heart kind of stick over the top a little bit. Well, I need to grind that down so that's all even. Touch up these edges. Um, hit these points. Hit these points with the ball peen. To make sure that they're stuck down and they won't stick anybody. I have some smaller shank rivets that I might put in there. Just to make it a little bit more friendly. I'm not sure if I want to fill these smaller places in at all. With, uh, with a smaller heart. I might do that. I'm still kind of up in the air about that. So we'll figure it out. But first things first, we're going to do some grinding. So I forgot to mention what these hearts were made out of. Uh, I have all these little pieces of stainless steel. They're actually <laughs> equipment nameplates from where I, uh, where I work. We've since changed our name and address. So a whole box of these, probably about, I don't know, 70 or 80 of them. Thin, thin stainless steel. You know, not much good for anything, probably. Um, gorget plates, things like that. Um, maybe finger gadlings. Um, I don't know. It's pretty thin, thin gauge. I can't remember uh, what the thickness was when I ordered the replacements for the new address. But anyways, so that's what those are made out of. Um, so my last step for this is to put on some D-rings. Um, a lot of these shields, um, like a lot of shields outside of Western Europe, um, and England, um, tend not to have a solid handle, um, what you have is rings attached, like four spots, and either those rings, you'll run corded in an X, 
Sometimes you'll run it in a U and you grab it. Sometimes it'll actually be uh, sewn together. You know, so you'll have the U, the U, and then it'll be laced to make a handle, but it's not solid and your hand rests right up against the shield, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so you'll see some of them like the, uh, I had mentioned the, uh, the Indian doll or the Persian separ, um, same, same basic shield, the, the dome shield. Well, that's deep enough that you kind of put a, uh, put a pad in there. It might be felt, might be sheep's wool, uh, could just be a bundled blanket, uh, bundled piece of blanket or fabric in there to sort of protect your hand. Um, we don't have that on the Kevzer shields. Um, they tend to have to be flat on them. I just think these uh, these mountain men were some tough bastards. <laughs> didn't care about it. They're like, well, my hand hurts, but at least my head didn't get split by a palash. A polish, polish saber. We'll just go with saber since I'm mispronouncing it. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna peen down these rivets here, reshape them, and then I'm gonna put on my D rings, um, and we'll come back and we'll figure out what sort of straps we want to put on this bad boy. Okay, so <laughs> after a lot of struggle, I got the, uh, um, the D-rings in and attached the cords. Right now I'm just using paracord. Uh, I will probably get some rawhide and use that in the future. But you can kind of see what I was talking about where the, uh, the handle's not a super rigid handle like it is in a European style. And see, you're just gonna grip it together like that. And then it rolls over the ball of your, your fist. And then it's held that way. You know, and you can see, um, so interest is some padding. I'm probably gonna get some blanket and just fold up a couple pieces of uh, old blanket and um, put it in there. I said, I think those, uh, those old guys from Kev Serretti were probably pretty damn tough. Um, so, next step, since I have the difference in materials, I got, you know, you got your regular steel and your stainless steel and the marks and everything like that, is, dun dun dun, spray paint. Uh, not the white one, the black one. So, we'll hit this with, uh, with some black spray paint, let it dry, and yes, it's going to get chipped up and banged up, but hey, that's fine. It'll look that way. All right. So, let me put a layer of paint on this. We'll, uh, and we'll come back and take a look at it. And I think that'll about wrap her up. So there it is painted. Um, it's uh, wet right now. So we're gonna shut down for the day. We'll let it dry overnight. Come back and see how it's doing. Um, and should it be successful? Um, yep, that's it. Um, and thanks for watching.